Welcome back, Sebastian here. So today I want to take a look at Haas and how they've done through uh, the first half of the 2023 Formula One season. So starting right away with the driver head-to-head, -head, uh, Hulkenberg uh, leads the way there, nine points to two over Magnussen. Uh, in the race head-to-head, -head, however, uh, Magnussen is the one who's come out on top, uh, five to three advantage for uh, Magnussen there. In the average finishing position, very close, uh, 14 for Hulkenberg and 14.2 for Magnussen. So in the races, uh, Hulkenberg's definitely had much higher peaks. Uh, that seventh place in Australia got him six points, which is the majority of his points from this year. Uh, of course, got a couple points in the sprint as well, uh, thanks to a, a great qualifying position. That being said, I do think that Magnussen has been a little bit more consistent uh, in the races though. Uh, qualifying head-to-head, -head, this one's not really close, uh, nine to three in favor of Hulkenberg. Uh, qualifying delta uh, is 0 0.475, uh, so about over four and a half, four and a half tenths of a second uh, in favor of Hulkenberg. So this is the one that's really not close. And I think this is part of the reason why I think Magnussen is at, potentially at risk for losing his seat in Formula One next year. Uh, we saw last year with against McSchumacher, uh, he was much better in qualifying. Schumacher was basically even with him uh, in the races, but in points, Magnussen was well ahead. And this year, uh, Magnussen's been quite far behind in both uh, qualifying and in point finishes. Although uh, with the car that the Haas has, it can be very, very unpredictable from circuit to circuit. Uh, looking at my average, uh, their average position on my power rankings, uh, Hulkenberg 15.25, Magnussen 15.33, uh, which lines up pretty closely with uh, how they've done in the race, which tracks with uh, the fact that I usually bias my power rankings much closer towards the race results and a lot less towards qualifying. So if I did a qualifying only power ranking, uh, Hulkenberg would probably be much higher. Uh, looking at expected points, 13 for Hulkenberg, 7 for Magnussen, showing that discrepancy in starting position from qualifying. Uh, but also, I think it also shows that uh, this is for non-sprint race points, so it doesn't include points for sprint races. Uh, so, of course, if you eliminate uh, Hulkenberg's two points from sprints, I believe that would give him seven only. And it really shows that the Haas car, like many other Haas cars from the past, namely 2019, I remember being a big one, uh, they can qualify pretty well, uh, but their race pace and their tire wear is really, really poor, and it just drags them down in, in most races. So that's really showing the big discrepancy between the expected points uh, and their actual points. Uh, Z score is 0 0.8, so not that big. Uh, so seventh biggest uh, gap between teammates, which means it's of course uh, fourth smallest gap between teammates. So uh, fairly close between them in the races, uh, but Hulkenberg has decidedly been ahead over the course of the year. Uh, looking at qualifying through this year, uh, first five races, they were on average 1.354 seconds off of pole. Uh, of course, their best time, uh, the gap between their best time in qualifying and the pole position time, which ranks seven. Uh, through races six through 12, uh, the gap's gone down to 1.035, which is still seventh. So they're basically at the top of that group uh, of themselves, uh, Alfa Romeo, uh, Ast uh, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tauri, and Williams. Uh, but that being said, I think through all the groups I've looked at, all the teams I've looked at so far, uh, the gap has decreased uh, through the second half, which I think is probably more due to track characteristics and less the gap actually shrinking. Now, taking a look at how Haas is doing this year relative to past years, uh, 2020, three points ninth in the constructors. Of course, they were hurt really badly uh, by uh, Ferrari's engine in 2020. 2021, the absolutely uh, rock bottom year, of course, uh, their two drivers were Schumacher and Mazepin. Uh, they were pretty hurt pretty badly financially by the pandemic uh, and were forced to take basically a pay driver and a Ferrari junior. Uh, zero points, 10th in the constructors, absolutely awful year. They were effectively using a 2020 car with that was modified to suit the 2021 regulations. Uh, 2022 new regulations, 37 points, uh, eighth in the constructors, a solid rebound, uh, but still, uh, similar, really similar to Alfa Romeo, started the season very, very strongly, basically middle of the midfield, uh, but then as the year went on, they really tailed off and they finished eighth and ended up finishing eighth in the constructors. This year, 11 points through 12 races, 
uh, constructors, though again, eighth, and they're in a really, really tight battle with themselves, uh, Williams and Alfa Romeo for that seventh place. So seventh place is still on the cards. Uh, and I think for Haas, they're really on pace for about 22, 23, 24 points uh, this year. So definitely a step back from last year in terms of points. Uh, of course, the point structure with quite a few teams being very strong this year means that for those lower teams, points are more valuable. Uh, and be, being the second year in a set of stable regulations hurts as well. But for Haas, I think for this year, it's been okay, not fantastic. Uh, Hulkenberg's qualifying performances have definitely been a real bright spot for them. And it'll be interesting to see, uh, especially particularly in the sprint weekend, uh, what kind of performances they can get out. Um, I think for the end of the year, they're really going to be looking to get that seventh uh, and really kind of hoping that Magnussen kind of rebounds, especially in qualifying. Uh, otherwise, they may be looking for another driver. And well, who that driver is, knowing Haas's uh, past choices of driver lineup, uh, it probably won't be a rookie, but it would be someone who probably either maybe brings a bit of money uh, or and is someone who is fairly experienced. So that's all for my look at Haas. Uh, through the midpoint of the season. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.